Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. I'm Mark Goldbridge. Has the wrong decision been made around VAR? There was a vote this week. 19 clubs voted to keep. One club, Wolves, wandered into the darkness and were outvoted 19 to 1. Now, two apologies. First of all, we've been on about this all season and I should have done a reaction sooner. So get in the comments. Second of all, Throat's a little bit sore. It was out last night, very late. I uh, don't have a hangover, but just my throat's uh, a little bit off. So, uh, but apologies. I should have reacted to this because all season long, we've, we've spent so much time and you are the most important people, especially on this channel. That's football and on the podcast, uh, Goldbridge Saves Football, give that a listen. But we've banged the VAR drum all season. Have they come to the right decision? There are six pointers that have come out of the meeting on Thursday. It's not that it's just been voted down. There has been six pointers that have come out. We know there's going to be a new automated offside system that's going to come in in the autumn uh, international break, which will speed up uh, offsides. Uh, they won't be doing it on a Nokia, Nokia 3210 with a ruler anymore. So that's a good thing. Also, there's talk that Howard Webb wants to bring in a system where the VAR officials are specialists and not referees. I think we've mentioned this many times as a community. Um, they also want to be more communicative with the fans in the ground. They want to mic up the um, the, the, the referees, uh, improving the fan experience. Um, they want to deliver some sort of... Um, uh, basically, it's about making it better. Uh, and also, they want to get rid of the clear and obvious thing um, and make it so that VAR only intervene, intervenes when it's clearly wrong. Um, look, get in the comments. Should... Every club have voted to keep VAR. Do you agree that we've kept VAR? Because I think a lot of people do want to keep it. My stance is it's a disgrace that so many clubs didn't listen to their fans. Um, it's not a surprise, but it is a disgrace. Um, some football clubs, including mine, Manchester United, um, did lobby the club to say, take notice of this vote and please vote against it. And the club decided to do what they wanted to do. And each club is owned by different people and it has a board and they have every right to make whatever decision you know fans are not consulted on sponsorships or you know working with different charities or anything like that clubs have to make decisions that's fine but ignoring your fans I don't agree with and I think that for all nine for 19 out of 20 to vote to keep it there's two things I would say and I'm interested to read the comments as always but there's two things I will say first of all next season if we see a red card one week and then the next week it's not a red card when someone does it on a Chelsea player. I don't want to see Chelsea fans moaning. Uh, so I, I don't I don't want to see Chelsea managers or players or the club moaning. Chelsea fans can moan. We can moan. Fans are the victim. If Liverpool have a goal that should have been given in an important game that gets ruled out because of a mistake with the technology, I don't want to see Liverpool tweeting or talking about suing or anything like that. Same with Arsenal. Same with Manchester United. Same with every other club apart from Wolves. I think Wolves next season, they can moan about the AR. Every, all, all the other ones, no. Fans can. Clubs can't. You can't vote to keep something that predominantly over the last season has destroyed the season. We've seen multiple red cards not given, multiple hand, handballs not given, multiple goals not given, offside goals that should have been given, penalties that should have been given. It's been... An absolute mess. And clubs have moaned about it. But the only one club that wanted to do anything about it was Wolves. Now, people would say, oh, don't turn it off. Don't turn it off. Just improve it. Hold on a minute. If you're driving down the motorway with a flat tyre, do you pull over and get somebody to change the tyre? Or do you just carry on and try and do it while she's still moving? It's dangerous. The fundamental problem with VAR is that technology will make football better. But the fundamental problem is it's been going on for years and it was never fit for purpose. And they're the words, forget clear and obvious error or VAR, fit for purpose is the words that, 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 that matter. And we've mentioned it on the podcast before and we've come up with solutions because that's what we should do. But this system of VAR doesn't work. And next season, it will still make mistakes. So when people say turn it off, what we're saying is turn it off and work on it until it's fit for purpose. Use it in the championship. Sorry, championship fans. But, you know, it should be used and worked out. But what the Premier League do and the PGMOL do is they run the tests in the most watched league in the world. 
it isn't fit for purpose. So yes, I agree the technology is not to blame. It's the people who are doing it. But there is so much wrong with VAR. It's not one thing. It's not just handballs. It's not just offsides. It's not just penalties. It's the whole thing is ridiculous. And also, let's not forget, one of the big fundamental problems with VAR is referees who are incompetent or arrogant make a mistake on the pitch and then VAR backs them up because they want to back the referee up on the pitch. And what actually should happen is he's made a mistake. We're not friends with him. We're professionals. You've made a mistake. It should have been a penalty. And that has got nothing to do with technology. That's to do with human relationships. So when is that going to get changed, Howard? And this is my problem with it, is that 19 clubs vote to keep something that's broke. And people just hide behind the fact, well, you can't switch it off. It's here to stay. We've just got to work through it. We can switch it off. It's like when your computer goes wrong, turn it off and turn it on again. Turn it off, sort everything out, and then bring it back in a year. But I guarantee if you switch it off, people probably enjoy it without it. But look, I'm interested in what you've got to say in the comments. I think it's redundant of us to moan about this all season. And then when the vote's done and 19 clubs vote to beat it, vote to keep it, we just go, oh, that's OK. You've got a voice. You are the voice. You've got a voice. And it was a big vote and 19 clubs voted to keep it. And I think it's very, very disappointing. I never expected 10 to vote to get rid of it, but I thought four or five might on the basis of what we just discussed there. I can't understand this argument of it's not the technology's fault. We just have to iron out the problems. Yeah. Stop the car. Change the tyre. Don't try and do it leaning out going, can we bump it up a bit so I can check? You, you know, this is a moving vehicle, VAR, and it needs stopping. It needs stopping, resetting, fixing and going again. But what everyone's voted to do is let's just carry on and try and make it better whilst we're moving. So what is inevitably going to happen next season is you're going to see more problems, more mistakes, more points cost. But everybody's voted to keep it because why? Because they're not intelligent people, I think. I don't think they understand. The big issue with VAR is not Gary Lineker on Match of the Day watching the highlights. It's not bloody Howard Webb and Michael Owen. And it's not on Mikel Arteta. And it's not Erling Haaland. It's not the players. It's not the managers. And it's not the media. It's you, the fans. The biggest issue is what VAR does to the fans. The erosion of the beautiful game. The dilution of the beautiful game. Who's the biggest victim in that? Well, it ain't the guy earning 300 grand a week. It ain't the manager earning good money either. It ain't the media panellist earning good money. They're already on the gravy train. And they win no matter what. The people who are losing are the people who put the money into the game. People who pay money and all they want back. Now, if I go and play up front for Man City and score goals, I'm going to get 300 grand a week. If I go and present match of the day, I'm going to go and get a good, good wedge. But if I go and watch Arsenal play and see a bad decision, I've paid however much for a season ticket or a one-off game. I don't, the only thing I'm, get, I'm paying to get enjoyment because I love football. And what I get back is injustice and incompetence. We should have had a vote on it. We'll never get it. But the, what they what they don't realise is the people who are the victims of VAR are the fans. And I'll never forget, even though it benefited Man United and ultimately won the FA Cup, when Coventry scored an extra time, there's a guy on a phone filming all the Coventry fans going, it's the best moment of my life. And I'm like, wait 30 seconds for VAR. Well, actually, wait two minutes for VAR to look at that offside. It's gone. That's the issue with VAR. That's why people are so fed up of it. And I'm not saying that technology isn't good. It will be good. But surely people can see the logic I and some have is that I'd rather switch it off now for a season and work on making everything better and test it and then bring it back than carry on regardless and just try and change things. We're still going to get referees protected, arrogant referees. We're still going to get red card there, not there. I know how to fix it. You know, Howard Webb is sort of right. You need the referees and the VAR officials to be separate entities who don't even know each other because there can't be relationships. You need consistency meetings every Monday morning where you analyse and go, why did you give a red card for that, but last week you didn't? You know, why is that a handball this week, but it wasn't there? Why is that a shove on the goalkeeper two weeks ago, and now it's not a foul? Like, it's so simple to do. Are they even looking at those things? 
Um, obviously the speed of the offsides, that will improve. But the real issue for me isn't the offsides. It's the inconsistency on red cards. It's on handballs. It's on penalties. And it's also seeing a bad decision and VAR not turning it over because they want to protect the referee on the pitch. Get your comments in below. Smash a like on the video. Give us your thoughts. Sorry it was a bit late on this, but it did need to be done. We've been talking about it all season and we can't just sweep it under the carpet. Take care, everyone. Subscribe. Get involved. Big week of the Euros coming up. I've got my Euros prediction show coming up soon as well. Um, take care. Speak to you soon.